it only gets more steep from here. Uh, and the love and support that you have used to help sustain them throughout is going to be equally as important as they move forward uh, in embracing the challenge of leading America's finest young men and women whom we call United States Marines. So congratulations to all. This is a wonderful and uh, uh, memorable experience and moment that uh, will forever be emblazed in uh, your minds and in your hearts. So thanks for everything. Uh, and now it is my pleasure and opportunity to be able to introduce our Assistant Commandant who is our Commissioning Officer today. Uh, General Paxton, uh, a Philadelphia uh, guy who went to school on the shores of Lake Cayuga, uh, uni or Cornell University, and is an infantry officer. Uh, he has commanded at every level successfully. Uh, he has achieved great uh, success as a uh, member of high-level staff as well, and he currently serves our, as our Assistant Commandant, uh, the number two person in charge of uh, this wonderful institution, the United States Marine Corps. Uh, and we are certainly honored and blessed to have uh, our Assistant Commandant here on a Tuesday afternoon to provide um, his thoughts on the commission as well as administer the oath of office to some of our newest second lieutenants of the Marine Corps. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you uh, our Assistant Commandant, General John Paxton. Good afternoon, officer candidates. Good afternoon, officer candidates. Much better, much better. All right, Colonel Van Opport, thank you for the uh, gracious and mercifully short introduction. Star Major Murphy, thank you very much. Great to be with both of you. It is an honor and a privilege for me to be here and to represent our Commandant and your Corps of Marines as we congratulate you on not only the success and the hard work you've demonstrated for the last 10 plus weeks, but the course that you're about to embark on. I'd also like to take a moment to congratulate and to thank Major Goodale and First Sergeant Tyler and all of the two commanders, company commanders, uh, staff and officers at OCS and in particular for the OCC class. So to the officer candidates here, before we go on and before we make the rest of the day all about you, there are indeed two other groups that we need to thank. I just mentioned all of them, and that is the staff. They are the staff at Officer Candidate School. You would not be here if it were not for them. I guarantee that for the rest of your life, if you hear that certain voice, you will remember that certain name, and you'll probably brace yourself, because you will not forget your platoon sergeant, your sergeant instructor, your platoon commander, your company commander. For the officer candidates, will you please join me in a round of applause for the staff at OCS. And indeed, it doesn't matter whether you're at Paris Island, South Carolina, San Diego, California, here at Quantico, Virginia. It is a unique, a special, and indeed a sacred mission for making Marines and making the next generation who will defend this great country. So my congratulations on behalf of our Corps to all the Marines who are on the staff. Thank you very, very much. To the officer candidates, as Colonel Van Oppenheim said a moment ago, you would not be here were it not for the love, the support, the guidance, the dedication, the inspiration, sometimes the number 10D, that helps you get here, either academically, physically, spiritually, or just in terms of emotional guidance. Many of you have seen that. I'm going to ask all the officer candidates to stand for a moment, to look around, to find your loved ones, your mother, your father, your grandparents, or some of you, your spouse and your children. Maybe a great high school teacher, a coach, a college guidance counselor. But you're here because they motivated you and helped you. How about standing up, make eye contact, and give them a round of applause? to see all the hand waves and the smiles and already maybe a few of the tears 
up there in the balcony. So it's great to have you all with us. Thank you for being so supportive and encouraging your young man, your young lady, your soon-to-be lieutenant to embark on the path he or she have taken. So candidates, I just want to spend a few moments to talk about three things today. I want to talk about your and our Marine Corps. I want to talk about your and our mission. And I want to talk about your and our oath of office. Before I do that, I want to go back to something that Colonel Van Opdorp said a moment ago. I indeed sat in your shoes and I do indeed remember what you went through. Now it was 40 years ago, we were still riding horses, we had log cabins, we had spears, we had things like that. Okay? But I want you to remember, I remember the day I was commissioned. I remember I was sitting right next to Al Pavsner, my bunkmate from OCS. My bunkmate and buddy Daryl Shore, former prior enlisted 08, was behind me. My parents had driven down from Pennsylvania. A warm day in early November, about this time of year, right before the birthday ball. I remember it like it was yesterday. I also want you to know I have no idea who administered the oath of office and what he said. And that's truth, all right? So I harbor no illusions or delusions here, which is why I want to speak to you briefly about those three things. Our Marine Corps, our mission, and our oath of office. Our Marine Corps, you are joining an old, a proud, a venerable, and honorable institution. I see from many uniforms out here that we have shipmates, battle buddies, and wingmen with us. We are intensely proud of our mates in the Army, in the Navy, in the Air Force, in the Coast Guard, and the National Guard. Collectively, we represent one half of 1% of the American population. Less than 1.5 million out of 330 million Americans. That's the small cadre of wonderful, talented, exceptional, self-sacrificing men and women whose company you join. So every time you have a chance to see a soldier, a sailor, or an airman, let alone a Marine, they're on our team, one team, one fight. Now, within that small cadre, there are only 186,710 Marines, give or take a few, okay? Less than 15% of the DOD population wears this cloth. You are part of that elite crew. And within that 186,710, one officer for every nine enlisted. The smallest ratio of any of the services. Now I say this for the parents and loved ones in the audience who perhaps didn't come from a military background. The course that your loved one has taken is indeed exceptional and is indeed rare. They are a small percentage and a small cadre of an already great nation and an already great Department of Defense. But mentally, morally, and physically, they are indeed a cut above. And for the last 10 weeks, that's been driven home to them and instilled in their minds throughout the screening and selection process. Because OCC is indeed a screening and selection process. Only 65% of the ones that started 10 weeks ago are seated here in front of you. And some may not make it through the entry level trading pipeline before they go out to the fleet. It's a hard nut to crack. We're incredibly proud of them, as I know you are, and that's why this day should be so very, very special, and you should feel so good about what they have accomplished. So the Corps you are about to join is 239 years old. We just celebrated our birthday two and a half weeks ago. If you listen to the birthday message, you heard our Commandant General Dunford talk about your great forebearers, those ones who went before us particularly 70 years ago this month on Peleliu, or 10 years ago this month in Fallujah. I can tell you that on today, on the 25th of November, as I sit and talk to you, if you were with the 1st Marine Division at the Chosin Reservoir in Korea, there would be two lieutenants among many, many who distinguish themselves tonight. One with a silver star and a purple heart, after he had already earned the Navy Cross, and a Purple Heart three weeks earlier by the name of First Lieutenant Chu Ann Lee from Sacramento, California. 
the other one, Lieutenant Frank Mitchell. Medal of Honor tonight in one seven. Both of them running the ridge lines in minus 19 degree temperature to keep the enemy at bay so the 1st Marine Division could break out from encirclement to get out. I tell you that because that's the core you're going to join. And because a year from now, you could be Lieutenant Lee, you could be Lieutenant Mitchell. I have every confidence in you, as does Colonel Van Opdorp and Sergeant Major Murphy, that we're ready to turn over, turn into your trusting eye, your careful gaze, your steady hand, the young men and young women of our country who are Marines, who you will lead into harm's way. That's the core you join, a band of brothers and sisters strong for 239 years, and you are now part of that eternal spirit, as General John A. Lejeune said, that animates our core. So I congratulate you for being commissioned in our United States Marine Corps. Point number two, your mission. Many of you have come in knowing exactly what you want to do. Some are pilots, some are naval flight officers, some are lawyers. I don't want any of you to be disabused here. You're all platoon commanders. Everybody is an infantryman first. Just like every Marine rifleman, you will learn how to be a platoon commander. Every one of you will be a platoon commander. And that is because of the words of General Lejeune and General Kulak, another commandant, you actually only have three missions in the Marine Corps. You can be the best lawyer around, like F. Lee Bailey. You can be the best pilot around, like Pappy Boyington. But in essence, as Marine leaders, you only have three tasks. You will make better Marines, you will win battles, and you will return better citizens. And I ask you every day, as you work very, very hard, as I know you will, to be the best artilleryman, to be the best engineer, to be the best naval aviator, to be the best judge advocate. I would challenge all of you also just to be the best leader, to train a Marine, to develop a Marine, to make a Lance Corporal into the finest NCO you can find, to help him or her on their path. Be a good leader, make better Marines, win the battle, Realize everything you do feeds into a battle that we have to win to keep this great democracy going for another 239 years. And then number three is return better citizens. Realize that in the case of all your wonderful Marines and men and women sitting here, only about one in five will stay in the Marine Corps for a career, officer or enlisted. We want to make sure that the 80% that hangs up the uniform not only remembers that it's always earned, never given, proud to my dying day to be a Marine, but we actually have better American citizens out on the streets in Portland and Tulsa and San Antonio. So make better citizens. Can you do that? Yes, yes sir. I know you can. I have every confidence in you. I've watched it for 40 years. I know who you are. I know what you'll do. My obligation and my opportunity today is to administer the oath of office. You will hear someone read it to you in a few minutes. It is a sacred trust and a sacred piece of paper. Much of it has not changed since the days of the Roman legions. It is unique to the United States of America, however. You will swear, and unless you are married, perhaps you only swear one or two times in your life in front of God and the assembled com company. Don't be laughing, I saw some of you. All right. Now, you will not swear to uphold a king. You will not even swear to uphold a POTUS, a president, a commander in chief, or a party. You will actually swear to uphold an idea. An idea that is written on some parchment paper that's called the Constitution. We are the only country in the world where you swear allegiance to uphold an idea. I would ask all of you in the back of your minds as you wrestle, never between right and wrong, but between the greater right and the lesser evil, to make sure you always think about what's in that parchment paper and what's in that Constitution. My final piece of advice to all of you is, when we finish the oath of office, you will be forever a United States Marine. Always earned, never given, once earned, never taken away. 
I'm proud to be on your team, and on behalf of our Commandant and 186,710 others, we look forward to serving with you. One day, decades from now, you will be laid to rest. At that time, you'll go before your Maker and you'll be judged. They say that you judge a man or a woman by the company you keep. I am here to tell you that you are now amongst the finest company you will ever meet. Stay in step with them, take care of them, and be a good teammate for the rest of your lives. I'm proud to be with you. Congratulations all. God bless and Semper Fidelis. Will the candidates to be commissioned please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to that part of the ceremony where the candidates will receive their commission and be administered the oath of office. A commission is a formal written authority issued in the name of the President of the United States of America, which confers on you your rank and authority as a Marine officer. It is signed for the President by the Secretary of the Navy and is issued under the seal of the Department of the Navy and countersigned by an officer in the Manpower Department, Headquarters, United States Marine Corps. Attention to orders. To all who shall see these presents greeting, know ye that reposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of officer candidates class 217, I do appoint these officers a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps to rank as such from the 25th day of November 2014. These officers will therefore carefully and diligently discharge the duties of the office to which appointed by doing and performing all manner of things thereunto belonging. And I do strictly charge and require those officers and other personnel of lesser rank to render such obedience as is due an officer of this grade and position. And these officers are to observe and follow orders and directions from time to time, as may be given by the President of the United States of America or other superior officers acting in accordance with the laws of the United States of America. This commission is to continue in force during the pleasure of the President of the United States of America under the provisions of those public laws relating to officers of the armed forces of the United States of America and the component thereof in which this appointment is made. Done at the City of Washington this 25th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2014, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 238th. By the President, signed, Ray Mavis, Secretary of the Navy, Joseph F. Dunford, Jr., Commandant of the Marine Corps. The taking of the oath of office is a pivotal act which changes the status from that of a candidate to that of an officer of Marines. General John M. Paxton will now administer the oath of office. Officer candidates, class 217, you raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I insert your name. 